What you do is you take your piece of crown molding, you bring it up, you lay it in place, it's tight. This is a giant piece for the island. I mean, what are we looking at here? Five feet by 10 feet or something like yeah, that? Yeah, this is a 63 by 130 inch island. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's gonna be a biggie. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hey there. Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house in Narragansett where we are down to our last couple of weeks and there's a lot going on. Starting right here in the master bedroom. This is above the two car garage. You can see that on the ceilings we've got the nickel gap trim. There's a closet behind me. We've got a beautiful bathroom. Painters are working on top of each other to get this done. Tile work is finished in there. And then as you leave this area, we go over that, hey Dougie, you leave the area um, from the new house into the old house. We've got some built-ins going in there for storage. We've got the beautiful barn doors for storage back there. And now we are into the original house. So we've got three bedrooms. They've got two kids, so they'll have an extra. This bedroom is one of them. Straight behind me is bedroom number two. And then in here, bedroom number three. So as you can see, a lot going on and still a lot of work to do. I just wanted to take a second to talk about our protocols for filming during COVID. We get a lot of questions about why you don't see any masks. So let me walk you through it. While we're filming this show, there are a bunch of things that we do to make sure that we are safe. We have a health screening, temperatures and questions about travel and symptoms and such. And we also have rigorous testing. You cannot be part of this crew without a test and a negative result. And in terms of the masks, well, these are on for everybody, including myself, until I actually go on camera. Then they come off so that we can safely bring you the show as we want. So have a look at the family room down here. You can see that we've got our drop ceiling, right? We've got the coffers. We've got uh, the stone going in for our gas fireplace right there. Some of the custom no work is going in. Beautiful maple trim and shelving and stuff. Same material that we're using here in the kitchen, Tommy, for our crown molding. Maple crown, right? Yep. Maple crown. It's a nice, nice wood. Was that five inches or so? It's a, probably out of a piece of one by six, so five and a half inches, right? Beautiful. So hard, durable. And I mean, in the kitchen, this is a great place to use crown. I mean, these cabinets, essentially because of that soft, they go all the way to the ceiling. Great way to dress them up. Well, also, this is this house is pretty crooked, <laughs> uneven. It's out of level. So, but the cabinets have to be level. And the crown also is a way to hide all of those imperfections in the house. Let me show you right here. So these two pieces that already have their cut, their uh, uh, inside miter on inside. So the piece goes together like that, and it's a nice fitting joint. And that's because this is set up for a 90 degree angle right there where the cabinet comes. So if you hold that square in there, just for example, hold it in there like that. So that's confirming that we've got 90, 90 degrees, degrees between the two adjacent walls. Right. So now let's say that corner is out of square. Maybe it's more than 90, like that. See what happens if, the tight, if it's tight in the tight corner there, but opens up on the outside. If it's less than 90, it's gonna open up on the inside and be tight on the outside. All right, but on a cope joint, I have to remove all of this material right here, being careful to follow that outside line right on the money. So here's that outside line that stays, and then, as you Everything's said... Everything's been relieved, and you see that it's beyond that point that you think, oh, I can just cut it up straight. You can't cut it up straight. You have to allow for the positioning of the two moldings. Because this is going to lay on the other one. Exactly. So let me show you what happens when I put these together. I put it in, and I fit it in there. Look at that miter, and that's square. So we're back to our 90 degrees. So. But what happens if the wall is out of square just a little bit? So if I take the molding and I slide it open this way. So this is opening up right here. We right. can see the gap. Yeah, but look at the miter. But we're it's not seeing any gap right there. Still tight. And if I go the other way. So where the gap shows up over here. The miter still stays tight. 
So a lot more forgiving. A lot more forgiving. That's why you want to do a cope and also for shrinkage of the molding or movement of the wood. But it all starts with a miter like this. And this is an inside miter that I cut on the crown molding. So we're at 45. The right angle, the right 45. Mm -hmm. And now what I have to do is I'm going to follow this outside line right here, the face of the detail. So if I just darken that a little bit like that. This is, this is what stain. This is what I'm going to not go beyond the cut line right there. So that's staying the face like that. And all this has got to go. Okay, so now we're gonna give this a try. And I'm gonna make my relief cuts first. Come up right up to the face. And if you notice, I'm holding my saw on an angle. See the angle of the blade? I don't want it straight up and down. So I'll make a series cut of this. So slide that out just a little bit. Now, I don't want to hold my saw straight up and down. I want to hold it like that so I have a back cut to remove that material. And I'll just work my way in. in place, slide it into the corner, fits tight. Now I take my pencil and I mark right back here for my outside miter. So I take my pencil, run it down. That's the shot and that's the angle that I want to go at. So now I'll cut my outside corner. With my saw set, I now line up the blade with my cut right there, bring it in. There's my outside miter. All right, so now we'll start installing right in the corner and we'll work our way out. Get the first piece up. Nice in the corner, I'll get one tack in it, maybe two. Okay, so now we're gonna work this outside corner to see how that fits. should be pretty good like that. Okay, I'll put some glue on it. Okay, so now we'll flip that over, put it in place. Pretty good. Let me get a tack in it. Now you can see I actually mitered this inside corner because it's such a short piece. I can show you how it just goes together. So yeah, you had me confused here because this says number three, but I would have expected one of these to be coped. Yep. No, we could definitely cope this piece, leave this piece square and cope this piece. But to show you on a small piece like this, it's easy to check the miter to see if it's a true 45, which it is in this case. So I was able to miter it. And now I'll just glue the joint and nail it up there. All right, now let's see. This piece has been fitted to go up here. And as you can see, that miter looks a little off. Yeah, it's tight down on the bottom. Yeah, so I have to pull this up. way out like that to get that miter tight. Yep. Okay. Now, the problem here is the ceiling is really twisted and angled. This line needs to be parallel with this line so you don't see the crookedness of the ceiling. So what we've done is we've pre-drilled some holes, one on that end and one on this end, and we'll drive a screw through the molding into these nailing blocks. It's basically going to allow us to sort of twist this piece of crown? Right. The screw allows us to change, uh, control the twist that we need. 
First thing we're going to do is glue up this joint. Now I'm going to put a screw in here, pull this joint tight. right into that little nailing block. Right there, perfect. All right, now do the same thing on your end, nice and slow with that. Now watch your miter. There, you can see, picking it right up. How's that? All right, look good. Yeah, I think that looks really good, Tommy. Yeah, the crown molding, the crowning touch in a room. Yes, all right, we're not done in the kitchen yet, though. No, we got some more work over here to do. One of the more interesting projects uh, still to be done is one you're working on, Jeff, which yeah. is this, this little former outhouse project. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> I mean, outhouse to pantry, that's outhouse something. Outhouse to pantry, yeah. So we have kitchen cabinetry here, so we thought it would be nice to make this look like a cabinet door but instead of only being two feet deep, you actually walk in and you can, you know, get the whole thing. So this is supposed to look like all of the uppers and lower cabinets in right. the space, but full size yeah. door. And the challenge is, you know, we have concealed hinges here. So the hinges are on the inside, but these little hinges are made for a five pound door. We've got a 75 pound door. No oh joke. God. Yeah. That's, that's right. unbelievable. Yeah. That's like five quarters thick. It is, it is an inch and a half. All right, so we need some serious hinges. So what are we using to get us out of that trouble? So super heavy duty hardware. These are concealed wow. hinges. Look at that. And they're rated for 200 pounds. So we've so, got plenty of meat there to... So one side gets recessed into the door, one into the frame, right. and when it's closed, you won't see any of that. Exactly. Look at that beautiful, some kind of nice polished metal. Yeah. Okay, uh, looks like you've got started already. Uh, oh man, that yeah. is not, not a, lot. a lot of tolerance there. Very thin strip right there. So we have, we, it comes with a template and you basically have two different size mortises. You've got this one for the frame and then you've got a separate one for the door. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we made a jig to mount on here so that we can plunge the router in and notice we have two separate depths yep. because of the way the body of the hinge works. Yeah, so this jig was based on that template. So it's got these two slots so that that slides over the jam. So this is the router that we're going to use. And these sides right here will ride up against the sides of the jig. And then the depth is set. We've got, we've got three different choices here. So this, this stop right here comes up against here, and that is the depth for pass number one of the shoulder. Okay, so that's the first step. I'm gonna release it, set to the next stop. That's gonna go a little bit deeper. All right, now we'll set this down to the... So I'll take two of these. All right. Now we're ready for the door. Okay. Give me just a little bit on the bottom. That's good right there. Good. Pretty good. Now let's try it. All right, I'll come out. There you go. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Nice job. Thanks, Jeff. All right.
Our countertops are in. Backsplash is our next, Keith, and uh, looks like a quartz material. It's super popular these days. Mm -hmm. This is quartz. It's 93% um, stone and 7% resin and fillers um, to give it the color consistency that it has. And it's um, very mo it's mo more durable than granite. So a huge piece here for the island. I mean, what are we looking at here? Five feet by 10 feet or something like yeah, that? Yeah, this is a 63 by 130 inch island. Um, pretty much it's almost a full slab. Looks like we kept the width the same. We just took a little bit off the, um, the ends. Right, and so out of a, a full slab, the slab's not this thick, right? This is an illusion you created it's for us It's not this thick. The slab is actually three centimeters, which is inch and a quarter. Yeah. We build up the ends and the miter gives it the, um, the look of three um, three inches. That's awesome. I mean, that's quite an illusion, right? You cannot tell that's mitered at all. Absolutely. Nice job on that one. Thank you. Okay, so durable, which is why people like it. Although it looks, you know, they've done a real good job of making it look like a natural stone. Marble in this case, this veining is sort of throughout. Yeah, quartz these days, they come in um, probably anywhere between 100, 150 colors. Um, the look in the marketplace right now is that Carrera marble look, which is what you're going to see a lot of here which is what we're doing on the perimeter as well as the backsplash. Correct. It's a full height backsplash, which is very popular right now. It's the same material when it comes into us, they all get pictured. They are book matched, so they look like mirrors when they come into us. And then programming will do the vein match right up underneath the cabinets. So the computer does all of that. And an old school method before the computers, and if you were using, say, natural marble, what was that process like? The old school method was they used to cut out on a bridge saw and all the vein matching would have to be done by eye. So I presume the computer way is more efficient? More efficient on a product like this and the old school way to do it, maybe four to five slabs, this kitchen between two and three. Wow. And in terms of backsplash pieces, you got one in, how many more to go? Probably three more pieces to go. All right, let's get them in. And in this case, we're just talking dabs and dots over a couple places. Dabs and dots. Once it's in place, not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. And there's a, uh, looks like a little back bevel on the bottom leading edge of that. Very small back bevel. Uh, just makes it easier for the guys to put it in. Yeah. You want to get this tight as fit as possible. Absolutely. Want it to look like a seamless application. So is he, he's mixing up some seam filler here? Yeah, right now he's mixing up some epoxy to put in between where the two pieces come together to give it the look of a seamless um, piece of stone. It's the connection there between left and right piece filling in the cavity. Absolutely. A little bit of fine tuning using that razor blade to see if the uh, the two depths match. Yep, very detail oriented. That's a good fit, Keith. You can see this beautiful cut around the outlet, sharp. Seam is tight and that vein matching. Computer did it. Computer and the technician nailed it. That's a perfect vein match. Slabs come in, have their pictures taken, book match together. This could actually be two separate slabs, but the computer te technician can match the vein all the way up. Keeps the customer happy, right? Keeps the customer happy. All right, well, they're going to be happy with this for sure. Appreciate all the help. Thank you. Thank you. While the rest of the kitchen backsplash are the pieces of quartz, over here in this corner, we've got something different, Alex. So a little call out area. Yeah, it's a little bar area. Is the, the Put in this tile so I can break it out from the rest of the kitchen. Gotcha. And, and what is the tile? What do you put uh, in? This is a marvel and uh, it comes in a mesh and a single pieces. Oh, interesting. Yep. So there's the backer mesh. The backer mesh and the single pieces of marble and stone. So is each one of these pieces a different type of marble? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's single pieces. You put them together and have to find the right angle so it can bring actually make it makes chevron the, the chevron pattern gotcha okay so let's see this pattern come together so i have a 3 8 by 3 8 notch trowel because yeah. sometimes these walls um they're not perfect they're not 
So is the is the bigger notch a three eighths versus say a quarter or smaller? Is that more forgiving for you in terms of flattening the wall? Yes, I can have more plate. I can play with the tile a little bit more. So you got a cut made already for I, that outlet. Yeah, exactly for the outlet. It just. So when you order this stuff, Alex, I'm curious about the chevron pattern. Are these tiles that were manufactured so that they become a chevron pattern? Yes, that's yeah. how they... they you ordered them. chevron pattern, pattern tiles. Pattern tiles. That's good, because yeah. I wouldn't want to have to figure this out otherwise. Right. You cut everything on an angle. Yeah, Yeah. imagine that, put in piece by piece. No. I mean, that's a really tight joint right there. So do those get grouted as well? Yes, they, they do. They get uh, unsanded grout. And what is it? Unsanded. Unsanded, so it's yeah. a fine grout. It's a fine grout. It doesn't have any sand on the grout. Awesome. So you're about halfway up. The other half takes you about how much longer? Probably like two hours, three hours to get it done. All right. Well, thank you for that. And we'll be working no right next to you. All right. No problem. Tommy, as if there isn't enough beautiful stuff in this kitchen already, a fireplace too. Know, and a beautiful one. This fireplace you go see through. So it's a two-sided fireplace, oh, one nice. in the living room, one here in the kitchen. I actually love that. But look at this mantle right here. This is a beautiful piece, custom built right on site. Look at the detail here. These panels here are matching the legs that are on the island. Mm -hmm. And right here with this crown molding and the top of the mantle, that's the same detail to match over the windows. It's really a nice touch. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Kevin Barker, one of Jeff's guys here, spent two days building this thing, and it's absolutely gorgeous. You guys are killing oh, it for us. They're, they're killing it. The level of yeah, detail is great. awesome and really craftsmanship. Nice. Yeah. Although, there's a lot of work left. <laughs> you got a week left. Yeah. yeah, long days. A lot of painting. <laughs> a lot, a lot of. Yeah. Well, you know, the good thing is we just pull up this cardboard, and it's the floors are finished. and yeah, they're uh, all pre-finished. That's the nice it. thing about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, the outside's done. All and, that heavy lifting is done. And that's come a long way. In 11 oh, months, I mean, the yeah. way this place looked 11 months ago, right, it's a right. huge transformation. Yeah. So much detail. I mean, there's more detail on the outside than there is on the inside, just about. So. It is amazing. Yeah. There's so many different patterns on the shingles and everything else. Right. And the right. windows look great, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate all your help. Yeah. <laughs> well, the homeowners are getting in in a week, no matter what happens. And we're going to finish this, so we'll bring it all to you then. And until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Tom Silva. And I'm Jeff Sweeney. For this old house here in Narragansett. We'll be here till midnight. <laughs> and then some. And then some. Through lockdowns, travel restrictions, and material delays, Jeff and his team have persevered for the past year here in Narragansett. So we designed this steel structure not only to support the load, but also to be hidden in a coffin ceiling, which will come later. When we first saw this house, it needed everything. Mystery toilet. And you're going to be surprised how it looks today. You guys ready to celebrate this and show this thing off? Yeah. Our Queen Anne Victorian is almost ready to take a bow.